Welcome back my future university students. I hope you guys are still enjoying the show as much as I'm enjoying the show and I hope you called all your friends to tune in and they are now watching us and now we are going into our last question which was sent through to us by Itumeleng. So let's just have a look at what the question is and then I'll be back just now. Hey guys, my name is Itumeleng Molale. Can you please assist me with this question? Thank you so much, Ipileng, for that question. Remember, guys, you can also send your question through via our Facebook line or in our WhatsApp line. And also, you can always send through your questions and try and, and in, uh, was this interact with us from our uh, app, which is found in Android and also iOS, which is Tenfold Education which is brought to you by Liberty. So just remember, you can send more questions to us and we'll gladly assist you with anything that you need assistance with as long as it's met. Now let's have a look at the question. The question says, the line joining the points A and B is parallel to the line joining the points C and D. Now I have a line A, B. So this is the line that is joining these two points. This line is said to be parallel to the line CD. Please, I am not drawing it to scale, so you don't really need to try and draw it to scale. This is just to show you what the uh, actual statement is saying to you in a visual form. Now, given that these two lines are parallel to each other, remember we use arrows to show that lines are parallel. It means that I have a property which is, I will immediately say NB, 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 meaning important. What is important there is that the gradient of line one must be equal to the gradient of line two. That is the property of parallel lines. Therefore, my line one, I'll treat it as AB, and I will say this is equal to the gradient of CD. Now, going into the formulas, remember the formula is YB minus YA, divided by xb minus xa, which is equal to, here will be yd minus yc, all over xd minus xc. Please guys, I, I, I really, really need to warn you on this. If your formula is wrong, it means everything that's going to follow is automatically wrong. Because remember, if your formula is wrong in terms of a sign, maybe you wrote plus and not minus, you're going to substitute into a wrong formula. What are you going to substitute? Write things, but in a wrong formula. So it means the answer is going to be wrong. Now, I normally don't say people are wrong when they're writing answers. I normally say you guys are lying to mathematics because you know the answer, but you are just lazy to think about what the answer is. So please pay attention to detail. And you will always hear me say this. Pay attention to detail, detail, detail matters. Now, let's substitute the coordinates that we are given here. The coordinates of A are 3 and 2 and of B are 4 and 6. So it's 6 minus 2 divided by, uh, it's 6 and that, and then 4 and 3. So 4 minus 3, and this is equal to then C and D will be, C is negative 4 and 4, so it's minus 4 minus 4 divided by, then lastly it's going to be, I think here as I saw it, it's 8 and T. So it's 8 minus t. Now, the question said we want the value of t, which is what we have there. So this was us uh, interpreting the fact that the two lines are parallel to each other. Now, let's solve what we have here. Now, I will have 6 minus 2, you know it's 4, divided by uh, 4 minus 3 will definitely be 1. So I don't really need to write that down. And then this side, I'll have my negative 8 all divided by um, uh, 8 minus t. Now let me quickly just check whether I substituted correctly. We have 6 minus 2, we have 4 minus 3, that's correct. I have negative 4 minus 4, that is there. And then also I have 8 minus t, that is there. So I'm in the right track. Now, you also need to please try and do that to the best of your ability. That's how you make sure that you are writing the correct things. Now, from here, people, please, 
I don't understand what you guys think when you are doing maths, but let your nerves come down, please, because you guys are in this game and you got this. So you just need to relax. When you get to this point, this is where you then do what we call cross multiplication. Now, cross multiplication will then mean that I am multiplying that with that and then multiplying that with that. Therefore, I will then have a 4 multiplied by this will be 4 into 8 minus t is equal to 1 multiplied by negative 8 will be negative 8. And then I can just divide by 2 here. I don't really need to multiply the 4 into the brackets there. So I can divide by 4 both sides. So divide here by 4, divide there by 4. I have 8 minus t, which will get rid of those two. Negative 8 over 4 will then be equal to a negative 2. And then from here, I then take this to the other side. It becomes negative t equal to negative 2 minus 8 which is equal to negative 10, but this is negative t. Remember, we wanted the value of t, not the value of negative t, which is equal to then a 10, because I need to divide by negative 1 both sides. Easy peasy. Now, <clears throat> with this question that I have here, guys, what you purely needed to know is what does parallel lines mean? Parallel lines in analytical geometry means that we have what you call equal gradients of those two lines. Parallel lines in Euclidean geometry is a completely different story as to this. So please know how to differentiate the two because I know at times when you're thinking about parallel lines and you're thinking about maths, you then confuse yourself and try talking about angles and all. Those, those do not matter here. What matters here is the fact that parallel lines give us equal gradients. Perpendicular lines, which is a, a friend of this one or a neighbor of this one, means the product of the gradients is equal to minus one. So that's what you guys need to know. Now, with this question, I just showed you what exactly that you needed to do. Remember, guys, to tune in from 5 to 6 p.m. Monday to a Thursday. Also, send in more of your questions to us if you have any other questions that you need assistance with. For the past two weeks, we've been doing analytical geometry with you, which we are closing it tomorrow. And then next week, we'll then be preparing you for your exams. If you've already written your exams, I believe in you and I believe that you've aced those exams. If you haven't, good luck. And if you're writing them somewhere maybe next week or so, then you can benefit more. And then also we'd like to also thank Liberty for sponsoring us because without them we wouldn't be here. And I'd also like to thank you guys at home for watching us and being with us. And then I'd also tell you, please go out there and apply for university. Apply to as many universities that you can so that you can then uh, gain entrance to any university that you want out there. From me to you, that's all for tonight and I'll see you guys tomorrow.